The fabrics I'm gonna be using are this nib, nib. <laughs> okay, get it together. Welcome to The Modest Abode. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Kimberly, and today we're gonna to be making a pencil case. This is a really fun project. You can use any fabric you like. It's really fun to play with the variations and put different fabrics together. The fabrics I'm gonna be using are this beautiful navy hemp canvas, and I'm gonna pair it with this yellow upholstery weight cotton, and I'm gonna use a quilting cotton for the lining. One thing to note when you use a heavier weight fabric is that you want to use a lighter weight interfacing. We're going to box the bottom on this pencil case and therefore it's going to stand up on its own so you want the interfacing to give it structure. So why don't we go ahead and get into it. The supplies that we're going to need for this project are a sewing machine, pins, scissors, snips, thread that matches your fabric, wonder clips, a zipper, a ruler, an iron, a turning tool, and then I've made myself a pattern which is a rectangle 10 inches by 4 inches. And the other pattern you see here is a variation on the 10 by 4 where I just cut it at a diagonal and added seam allowance to one side. You need two coordinating fabrics for the outside of the bag and then we're gonna use one fabric for the lining, and we're also gonna use interfacing. So now let's put it all together. So next we're gonna be cutting our pattern pieces. We have two pieces that make up one pattern piece, and this is the variation pattern. So we're gonna be cutting two of each fabric. Okay, so we'll start with the dark piece. Pin the pattern piece on here so it doesn't move around, and then cut both layers. Now we'll move on to the yellow. You can see I have the fabric folded and the right sides are together. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pin the pattern piece on. And for the lining, we're gonna use the full 10 by four inch pattern piece since we're not having two tones on the lining. Same thing, pin your pattern piece on. And once again, the lining is folded in half with right sides together. I'd like to point out that I chose a lining, knowing that this is a pencil pouch, where it's not too light or white so that it won't show your pencil markings. So next we'll use the same pattern piece that we used for the lining to cut our interfacing. And then we're gonna cut two pieces of this as well. Okay, we have one last thing to cut, and that is a two by two square of lining fabric that's going to end up being tabs on either end of our zipper. So one of these squares is an inch, so I'm gonna do two inches and just follow that line. And then I'm gonna turn it and do the same two inches. So now I have two two by two squares. Next we'll move on to actually cutting our zipper and attaching the zipper tab. As you know, the pattern piece is 10 inches wide. Our zipper is 12 inches wide. So we're gonna place our zipper here and we know we want the zipper tab to start a half inch in, but I wanna put the zipper tab over this tape so I'm gonna leave this end alone. This end is where the zipper pull is. On this end, we're gonna just measure in half an inch. So I'm putting the lining on the guideline, and then that way I can see where my half inch is. 
And because this is a metal zipper, I'm gonna take a pair of regular scissors so I don't hurt my fabric scissors. And we're gonna cut one way. And then now that I know where that's where that measurement is, I'm gonna turn the zipper around and I'm gonna cut the other way. And then I'm gonna hold both pieces down and now I have to cut through the metal on the zipper. So I'm just gonna take it slow and be really careful and it cuts right through. So now we have the length of our zipper. We're gonna take these tabs and you're gonna fold over one end and then fold over the other end and just finger press them probably about a quarter of an inch on either side and then we're gonna fold it in half so that those ends are finished and folded together. Once you have that, then you're gonna slide the end of your zipper right in to the center of that tab and you're gonna pin it. You wanna pin this way because you're gonna sew it this way. And then for this end, these little pieces we want to baste together. So we're gonna take that over to our machine. We're gonna put a few stitches in to hold these together just in place. You don't have to back stitch. We just want it to hold so that we can do what we did to the other end to this end. Okay, so here we are at the machine and we're gonna baste our zipper tails together. And in order to do that, we're gonna open the zipper part way. We're gonna line up the teeth just with our fingers and we're gonna put that in the machine, lower the presser foot so you don't have to back stitch. Just take it nice and easy. Be sure not to hit the zipper teeth because on a metal zipper it will break your needle, but on a plastic zipper it'll just get in the way. So once you have your stitches done, Pull that out. We're going to trim our threads. You can zip the zipper again. So now we have our lining pieces. I brought those to the machine because we want to make sure that when we put our other zipper tab on that we're going to be leaving a quarter inch before the end of the lining fabric on either side of the zipper where the zipper tab ends. So as you can see, our tails are loosely stitched together and our tails go all the way to the end. So we're just gonna trim those off so that we have a quarter inch and then we'll do our other zipper tab. We're gonna do what we did before and fold in each end a quarter of an inch and just finger press it and then fold it in half and once you have that piece you're just going to cover up that little basting stitch that you did with the folded part of the zipper tab. So we're going to pin that onto our zipper. I'm going to remove the lining piece out from underneath and again we're putting the pins in this direction because we're going to sew this direction. And just make sure that your zipper teeth are still lined up properly and that you're not covering up the end like I just did, the end of the zipper teeth. And it doesn't really matter how far on either side, you don't have to center this piece because we're just going to end up cutting off the ends of the zipper tabs. Okay, so once you have both of your zipper tabs on, we are going to slowly stitch across the zipper so that it will stay in place. And again, be careful not to hit the metal zipper teeth. So I'm gonna use the pedal this time, but I'm gonna try to keep it slow so that I can be careful around the zipper teeth. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we're gonna stitch from the end here to the center using the pedal on the machine. And then I'm gonna hand turn the knob while I go over carefully these metal zipper teeth so that I don't break my machine needle. 
and then we'll continue sewing from the center out to the other edge. And this is where I'm going to grab the knob and turn the knob very slowly over the metal zipper teeth. I just hit one, so I'm going to adjust so that I'm not hitting the tooth. Thread in my way. Now I'm in between the teeth. This is why I use the knob and not the pedal, because the pedal would cause it to hit, the needle would break, and we'd have to replace it. And now, I make sure I'm past it, and now I'm going to use my pedal again. And backstitch. And it's as easy as that. So now we have a line sewn at the end of the zipper tab, at the end of the zipper teeth. So I'm going to remove my pins and cut my threads. Okay, and now we have our zipper that has a tab on each end, and we'll just check it. We have our lining pieces, and so now when we put the zipper on our lining pieces, we have space on either end of each zipper tab, and that's exactly what we want. So for now, we're going to set our zipper and our lining piece aside, and next we're going to sew together our two-tone outer pieces. So we want our outer pieces, and I left the pattern on just to help me out a little bit, but we're going to take off the pattern at this moment after we've set it how it will be in the, when it's finished. So my pattern says bottom and top. This could say left and right. Either way, I know where it goes. And so I'm going to get rid of the pattern pieces. And now I want right sides together. You're going to have a little bit sticking out on either end, just a tiny bit but you're going to pin these right sides together. And set that aside while you do the other one. Again, right sides together. And the reason I wanted to show you this way is because it can be confusing if you just have these pieces sitting out and not knowing exactly how they go together. So that's how I keep it straight using the variation, the pattern variation. So again, I want to make sure that my ends line up and then we're just going to stick two pins in and we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance which happens to be at the end of my presser foot here. And so I'm just going to use that as a guide. I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And now when you take it out, we'll end up pressing open the seam, but you can see that these are the right sides and they're facing out and they're all in the line of the original 10 by 4 pattern. So we'll do that with the other piece as well. So next we'll take this to the ironing board and we will iron open our seams and we're going to add our interfacing at the same time. Okay, so now we have our outer pieces with the interfacing on the back side and we're ready to attach our zipper. So we're going to take our zipper and open it halfway, put it face down on the outer part 
leaving the space on the edges as we discussed before. And then we're gonna just put one clip on here for now and we're gonna add the lining piece face down on top of it. So you see how these little tabs stick over the edge? That's what we want. And then we want the lining piece right on top of that. So we have right sides together and then the zipper. And we're gonna wonder clip all those layers together. So you can take the one you already put on and just include the lining. And I like to use quite a few wonder clips because I don't like the zipper moving on me. Once we have it all clipped, we're gonna take it to the machine, put our zipper foot on, and then stitch a straight line along the edge. We're going to move the pull out of the way. So we'll stitch to here, move the pull, and then finish stitching. It just makes it easier because otherwise you can get off course off your straight line along the edge if you don't move the zipper pull. So then we're going to sew a straight stitch all the way down. So you want to use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I am judging from the middle of my zipper foot. So I stop, I put my needle down, lift up my zipper foot, and then I'm going to reach under here and I'm going to pull the zipper pull out of the way. Make sure that my edges are still lined up, and then continue with my straight stitch. at the beginning and the end. So now we have our pieces all together with our zipper and we'll take it over to the ironing board and press it flat and then we'll work on the other side. Okay, so we've attached one side of our zipper. I need to trim my threads here on either end. And now I want to press these down so that the lining is out of the way of the zipper and this top part looks nice and neat. And press both sides. So now we're going to attach the other side of the zipper. So to do that, I want to make sure that I have the pattern facing the way I like it. You can have one side go one way and one the other way. On this one, we're just going to have them face the same side. Okay, so we're going to then put right sides together. We're going to line up our diagonal line and make sure that the end goes to the edge of the zipper tape. So I'll put a clip right there and then I'm going to flip it over and add my lining piece with the right side facing down, right sides together again, and just make sure the edges of the lining are matching up. And I'll clip all along that edge, and I want to pull the zipper pull down just a little bit, because we're going to do the same thing, moving the zipper pull out of the way to make sure we have a straight line on this side, just like we did on the other side. So we'll clip all the way down and then we'll take it back to the machine. All right, so we're back at the machine and we're gonna do the same thing on this side as we did on the other side of the zipper where we have an eighth of an inch seam allowance and we're gonna backstitch at the beginning at the end and stop to move our zipper pull. Okay, so now we're at our zipper pull, so I'm going to put my needle down. 
pull my zipper foot up and then find the zipper pull here and move it out of the way. Now we can sew straight stitch the rest of the way. Open it up. We see we have the back of the zipper there and open it up completely. And now we have the zipper completely sewn in with the outer on the top and the lining on the bottom. So next we're going to press this down and then we'll top stitch. And when we top stitch, we're going to be switching threads. I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so we're back at the machine. We've pressed this all down nice and neat. We want to make sure our lining fabric is out of the way of the zipper and that it gets caught with our top stitching, which is what we're about to do. Now, you don't have to, but I like to leave my zipper foot on when I do the top stitching. And I'm going to sew with a navy thread from this end up to the yellow. And then I'll be switching thread for the yellow, but I'm going to sew this side and this side while I have my navy thread in and then I'll put the yellow thread in and sew the rest. I also like to adjust my stitch length to three which is a usual top stitching length. side and you see I definitely caught the lining fabric on the other side and then I'll start here and do this side Trim my threads. All right, now we just set that there while we change our thread color. So you only need to change your top thread because the lining thread, the bobbin thread, will not be seen. So we'll just start at the yellow along the same line where we had our navy thread. Be sure to lower the presser foot and back stitch at the beginning and the end. side. 
that as well. And you just want to know where you had it lined up so that you can do it the same on both sides. So now we have the fun part of putting the bag together and boxing the bottoms. Okay, so now that we've top stitched with our two different color threads, you can see very clearly here, the navy matches the navy fabric, the yellow, the yellow fabric, and I just think it looks nice and clean. So now we're going to assemble the bag. So we're gonna open our zipper halfway, and we wanna put right sides together of the outer fabric and right sides together of the lining fabric. So you see how it's now changed up. So before we really get into matching up our diagonal line, the first thing we wanna do is make sure that we point our zipper tails the proper direction. And we want the tails, meaning the ends of the zipper, pointing towards the lining. So if you think about it, this is the top, and this is how it'll look in the end at the top. So we want it to be like this. So now we're going to take each of our outer pieces and try to keep it in this formation. Match the outer and the lining right sides together. While I'm holding that, I'm making sure that the tails are facing the lining. The zipper itself is facing up towards the outer fabric. I'm just going to clip it on either side of the zipper. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side to make sure that we have it correct. From experience, I have done it incorrectly and it's no fun to rip out and redo, but it is possible. So if you mess up, don't worry, you can just rip it out and redo it and you'll be fine. Now we can match up our diagonal just to make sure that everything is in line. Okay, and this will be the bottom of the bag. So when you turn it right side out, you want it to line up nicely, as nicely as possible. So that's why we're matching that diagonal line and clipping it there. So now we're just gonna take our pins and pin the rest of the way around the bag, leaving an opening so that we can turn it right side out eventually. So just match up your ends all the way around and pin. Since this is a heavier weight fabric that I'm using on the outer portion, we're gonna leave probably a three inch gap. Just eyeball it, you don't have to measure. So just keep pinning around all the sides until it feels secure. This is where our opening is. So we're gonna sew from here all the way up to here, around here, over here, and then back to here. So all of that will be stitched and over by the zipper ends. These, this is why I leave these tails on because you can see where it is and you're gonna sew right along that edge but you're not gonna catch this zipper tab and they'll show you at the end what that's going to do. We're back at the machine and there's two things that we need to do before we sew. The first one is change out our zipper foot for our regular presser foot. And the other is to change our stitch length back. We had made it three, now we're doing a regular stitch that we want to hold a little more strongly so we'll have it closer together. I'll take it down to 2.2. Okay, so we're going to put our piece in and start sewing. Remember we left a three inch opening, so we'll start sewing at one of those pins and back stitch and then we'll stitch all the way around to the other pin.
When you get to the corner, you're going to put your needle down and turn it. I'm using a quarter inch stitch length, which means I'm using the end of my presser foot as my guide. And just continue on. Now this is the part where we're looking at the zipper tab that we sewed and we're looking right here to make sure that we don't stitch over that. So I'm going to take it slow. Continue on. Once again, when we get to the corner, we're going to eyeball it, put our needle down, lift up our presser foot, and turn to make sure we have it on the end of the presser foot and continue on. Now we have our three inch opening. Okay, so now that we've sewn all the way around, we have our opening, we're gonna trim our threads, but before we turn it right side out, we're going to box the bottom and that will help it to stand up on its own. Okay, so now that we've stitched all the way around the bag, we are going to box the bottoms so that we have a pencil case that stands up like this. You have the option of leaving this part out and then you would just have like a flat pencil case. And that is totally fine if that's what you'd like. But we're gonna box the bottoms. Uh, let me trim my threads. So in order to box the bottoms, I wanna cut an inch square out of each corner. So I'm just gonna use my mat. Carefully, you don't wanna cut too far, you'll get a very angular bottom. So you cut in the inch, cut the rest. Now I can use this piece as a pattern for my other corners. It's a square, so it shouldn't really matter which way it goes. So once we have our corners cut, we're gonna open it up and match our seams. Just line them up, and I like to turn one, the bottom seam one direction and the side seam the other direction. But make sure the seam is matched, and then we're just gonna pin it together. The reason I like to Turn one seam one direction and the other seam the other direction is to alleviate bulk in the seam. Okay, we're going to do the same on all four corners. Match my seams, flatten the seam, bottom seam one way and the side seam the other, and then pin. You can press the seams open if you prefer, but I find it to be just an extra step that it's all on the inside, it doesn't really matter, it's not going to be seen anyway. So just to alleviate the bulk, we line it up and do the bottom seam one direction and the side seam the other. Cutting the inch gave us 
exactly where we need to match up the seams. You can do it without cutting it, but it's much easier once it's cut, even though that seems dangerous. <laughs> So once they're all pinned, we're going to take these to the machine and we're going to stitch a straight line about a quarter, maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge on all four sides. So I think an eighth of an inch will be plenty and that way we don't lose a lot of the fabric in our bag. So now we're at the machine and we're just going to sew our corners at an eighth of an inch straight across. You'll see a point come up there, but you want to sew a straight line. Back stitching at the beginning and at the end. And I'm just sewing over my pins here because I really don't want the corner to come apart. So now we'll do that for the other three corners. It's a bit awkward to put in your machine but just work with it. It will turn out just fine. Just sew that straight line an eighth of an inch in. Back stitching at the beginning and the end. So you can see how there's a straight line across even though the fabric comes up to the point. So now we'll do our lining. It's exciting after we trim our threads because we can turn it right side out and see how our bag came together. So just as a side note, I have a little bag that I made here just when I'm trimming my threads at my machine. I like to just throw them in there. It's been going for probably about a year. It's amazing how it just fills up. Finish trimming our threads and make sure it's nice and clean. And also, before we turn it right side out, I'm going to trim our zipper tab tails. So we go in the middle here, and now that we don't need them as a guide, I can trim them off. Just be sure not to cut your bag. So now I have a turning tool here. You can use a chopstick or a knitting needle or any turning tool you have. And you're going to go into your three inch opening in the lining. And then you're also going to go through where your zipper is halfway open. So I'm going to pull mine open even further now. And I'm going to start turning it right side out. using my fingers at first and then I'm going to take my turning tool, the pointy end, and I'm going to go in and just clean out the corner. Push it out cleanly is what I mean by that. Just push out each corner as clean as possible and I'm going to do that all the way around. So I should say on both sides. It's really helpful to do because my fingers just can't get in deep enough to make a nice clean point. You 
want to push gently though so you don't push through your seam. Okay, so now that we have that, we can at least look at our bag and see what it's going to look like. However, we want to take our lining fabric and stitch our opening closed. So this is gray fabric and I have yellow thread in my machine. So I'm gonna switch it out. I'm actually gonna use the navy. I'll just take a moment to switch the thread. One little tip I've learned when you're threading your needle, sometimes my automatic needle threader doesn't line up properly, is to wet the back of your needle. I know it's gross, but just lick your finger and set it towards the back of the needle. And then when you start to put the thread through, it grabs it and just helps you pull it on through. It works amazingly well. So now we're gonna finger press our lining that opening that we had is about three inches and all we have to do is get as close to the edge as possible with our stitching and make sure that we get the whole opening. So I don't pin or anything, I just backstitch at the beginning and at the end. beyond which is always safe so that's our closed opening I'm going to trim my threads and now we have a complete bag Okay, here we have our finished pencil case. So one of my favorite things about sewing is that you can take a flat piece of fabric and turn it in to something 3D. You could put cords in here or anything you like, personal items of any kind, and they make excellent gifts and they're really fun, quick, easy sew once you know how to do it. So I had a lot of fun making this with you today. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you next time. Take care.